to our deconstruction. This is the last part. This is your answering service. You now have 15 paranoid messages. I can't believe I have so many enemies. It's really quite remarkable. Anyway, there we are. Um, I'm out of it now. I'm just a, a puppet. Bye. Deleted. Even now, Simon D. blames the decline of his career not just on his media bosses, but also on a campaign by the secret services. The special branch came along and said, we knock on my door and said, Mr. D., we'd like to talk to you. And they came in. I said, all right, lads, because I knew that they knew all about me. It was obvious to me that as a high flyer in the media, I would have my line tapped by British intelligence. I mean, they would want to know who I was talking with and what I was talking about. I mean, it's, it's, it's logical. So it's perfectly obvious that the CIA, who control our media and still do, would know about this. There's no proper explanation within Simon's own character, with his own abilities for his failure. And if he can't have that to turn to and say, well, did I do something wrong? No, I didn't. It must have been someone else. Who was it? And his life, in a way, has been a relentless pursuit to find out who it was who did him in. Dejection. You can't really blame him. Conspiracy or no conspiracy, stories abound of Simon B. biting the hand that used to feed him right up to the armpit. They gave him another chance to get back into radio, and on the first day, uh, there was a feature in the program that he was about to do, a coffee break item, and I gather they'd booked Gary Glitter uh, to come down, and he was going to be the guest of Simon D. And this was before all the problems with Gary Glitter. I mean, this is years previously to that. And uh, I gather Simon said, well, I don't really want to interview Gary Glitter. They said, well, he he's on his way down. We'd really like you to. And he said, no, I won't. And he just walked out. Over the past 30 years, Dee has occasionally been cited on television, coming on to talk about why he doesn't want to talk about himself on television. Would you do it again? I mean, would you work in television again? I wouldn't, no, no. no. Six years of fame and 33 years of nothing. <laughs> There's no doubt that Dee did have a talent that was rare at the time. He could handle live TV. I hope you're getting on with the Dee time being live business, because it won't happen unless it is. It's got to happen, otherwise you're fired. And he was a listener, a surprisingly rare gift among chat show hosts. But the TV industry couldn't quite handle his talent, and neither could he. I'm, I'm quite obviously superfluous to requirements. At the discussion, Dee took part in an analysis of the changing nature of TV fame. To go back to Simon, I want to go back to Simon because this is new for me. To go back to thinking about when I was growing up in the 60s and what I thought England was about and what I thought London in particular was about because in that year it was the center of the world for us who were very young. We wanted to come here because it looked hot. And Simon embodied that idea. And so therefore, that part of you that you wanted to release, to make to live, that celebrity, Simon D, embodied that. And that is what celebrity well, does. Uh, if I may, you are, in a peculiar way, a celebrity because you're no longer a celebrity. I mean, in a way, over the years, you have, as it were, made a number of appearances here and there. Here is someone who was a celebrity who's no longer oh, a celebrity. That's the way you're a celebrity. I, this is sick. Isn't it? Which is a shit thing to be, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's horrible, isn't it? It's you, sick. No. Most people, if they're an accountant or, 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 or a journalist or an architect or a banker or something, they get on this road, on this railway, and they're scoring, and they think, well, if I behave myself, I will get to there. And there is a house in the country. I'm just basically, children are being educated, I'm still with my wife, and everything is okay. I've even got grandchildren, and I'm there. I'm 70, and I'm there. Um, but if you join the media, get on the media railway, oh dear, that's very different. That's right. um, you, you haven't got right. the security of knowing that even if you are a success, that you will remain that's there. Right. But, you, but you were cheeky and you were naughty. And what happens when you get institutionalized insurrection? Because that's what it amounts to. I can't to go along with this naughty business. Maybe not naughty, but not always very nice either. Simon could be very arrogant. I mean, the arrogance was part of what made him the performer he was, you know, if you like, a controlled arrogance. Um, but uh, he, could, he could get out of his pram and throw the rattle about a bit if he wanted to. OK, you're Simon D, but it doesn't mean that you're, you should treat people any differently. Uh, uh, but he couldn't see that. Right from the start, young Simon, um, like the nursery rhyme, when he was good, he was very, very good. And when he was bad, he was horrid. 
but by the end of the discussion, the general consensus seemed to be that Simon D was more sinned against than sinner. 